Welcome back to Logic 101. I'm William Spaniel, and this lecture is on the exclusive OR, which you will recall means an OR expression where one part is true and the other part is false. And in my introduction to the inclusive OR, I said that there is a way to write down the exclusive OR using just the logical notation that we already have. So what I want to do in this lecture is twofold. First, I want to show you how to write down the exclusive OR using just the logical notation that we already have. And second, I want to verify that that is the way to write it down, and I'm going to verify it by using a truth table. So we get a little bit of extra practice in here with those truth tables. Let's get to it. This is how you write down the exclusive OR. You say P or Q and not P and Q. Why is that the exclusive OR? Well, it might not be so easy to see by just staring at it. So let's work on a truth table and verify that that is correct. So I've done a little bit of the work already here. We have two simple sentences, P and Q. I've gone ahead and filled in all the combinations of truth values for those two, sim two simple sentences. And then in the last column, we have the overall expression P or Q and not P and Q. So if that is in fact the exclusive OR, what that should recover is a truth value of false in the top row and the bottom row, and a truth value of true in the middle two rows. So it should be false in the top row because both of those things are true, and it should be false in the bottom row because both of them are false, whereas it should be true in the middle two rows because one is true and the other one is false in those middle two rows. So that's what we should expect out of our truth table if, in fact, that last column does represent an exclusive OR. So let's go through this process of creating a truth table to actually get to that. So the other three columns are filled in like that. So we have on the left side of the conjunction, a uh, disjunction between P and Q. So that's what we see in column three. And on the right side of the overall conjunction, we have the negation of P and Q. So we start off with the non-negated version. So we have just regular P and Q there. And then we, in the next column over, negate that fourth column. So we have not P and Q in the fifth column. And then that unlocks the overall expression, which is the conjunction of column three and column five. So now that we have those things filled in, we can go through each column and fill in the truth values for those columns. So let's start with column three here. We have a disjunction between P and Q. Remember that a disjunction is true when at least one part is true. It's false when both parts are false. So that means we have a truth value of true in the first three rows and a truth value of false in just the bottom row. For the fourth column, we have a conjunction. Remember that a conjunction is true only when both of the component parts are true. It's false when at least one of them is false. So that means we have a truth value of true in the top row and a truth value of false in each of the bottom three rows. For the fifth column, we have a negation of the fourth column. So that is essentially flipping the on and off switch in the fifth column from the fourth column. So we take the fourth column and we take all values of true and switch them over to false. And we take all values of false and switch them over to being true. And if you do that, then we just have that there. So we have a false value in the top row and a true value in the bottom three rows. And that leaves us with the overall expression, which I told you is an exclusive OR. So it's P or Q and not P and Q. And that's a conjunction of columns three and five. So for any other conjunction, just like any other conjunction, we look to see when both of those columns are true and we mark down those as being true. And when at least one of them is false, we mark it down as being false. So if we look at columns three and five, we see that columns three and five are both true only in the middle two rows. So we give true values to the middle two rows, we give false values to the top row and the bottom row. That's because in the first row, column five is false, and in the bottom row, column three is false. So in those two cases, in the top case and the bottom case, we have at least one part of the conjunction being false, which means the conjunction is false, whereas in the middle two cases, we have both component parts being true, so the conjunction is true. And that is why that expression, P or Q and not P and Q, is in fact an exclusive OR. So we got a little bit more practice in with truth tables, and that's good. And we have a little bit ways to go on truth tables in this unit. So join me next time when we get to one of those last parts of truth tables. Take care.